Today on Bits, we're going to talk about choosing your first 3D printer. When you're choosing your first 3D printer, it's really important to figure out what you want out of the machine. Do you want something that's going to work right out of the box, or do you want something that you get to build and tinker with over time? So we're going to talk about a few of the things that will help you make those decisions. But rather than telling you which specific printer to buy, let's talk about a few of the things that will help you make that decision, like price, print volume, and a bunch of extra features. First, you're going to see a bunch of different acronyms about the different types of printers. You're going to see FFF, FDM, SLA, SLS, probably some other ones. And the big difference between those is how they go about creating the item from raw material. FDM is the general term for laying down thin layers of material to build up an item. FFF is specifically that process with filament. And that stands for Fused Filament Fabrication. SLA stands for Stereolithography Apparatus. And that's basically just a resin that is cured by light. SLS stands for Selective Laser Centering. And that's where you take a powdered substance and you center it together, and that's not melting. It's more of a heated compression. The most common and cost-effective of those three is FFF. So that's what we're gonna talk about here. Later on, we'll do a bits video all about the comparison between SLA and FFF. First, let's talk about price. This really comes down to how you specifically want to spend your time and your money. A machine that is easier to use is usually a higher quality and also more expensive. A cheaper machine will require a lot more of your time to adjust, calibrate, and probably upgrade the machine over time. Decent quality printers start around $600, but quickly go up into the thousands. You can also get a printer for just a hundred or even a couple of hundred dollars, but you are going to spend a lot more time getting that machine up and running and printing to the quality that you expect. Kit printers are also a great opportunity to get a good quality machine, you just have to put in the work to put it together and get it calibrated. Ultimately though, you get what you pay for, so just decide ahead of time how you want to spend your time and your money. Next up, let's talk about print volume. And this is the full usable area on a 3D printer. This is usually measured in millimeters and a typical mid-range printer will be about 200 millimeters in all three axes. Smaller printers will be in the 100 to 150 millimeter range, but the larger ones will go 300 millimeters and up. This really comes down to what you want to use the printer for. If you're just looking to print small pieces, you don't need a big printer. But if you want to print a full helmet all in one piece, you're going to need one of the larger sizes. But even if you do have a large thing that you want to print, you don't have to print it all at one time. You can use slicing software to cut it into smaller pieces that fit onto your print bed. The next thing to think about is the maximum hot end temperature that you're going to need. If you're printing in PLA or ABS, pretty much any hot end will do. But once you get into the more durable filaments like nylon, polycarbonate, PETG, you're going to have to have higher temperatures. But if you have plastic parts on your hot end, those higher temperatures will cause it to melt. Again, this is a situation of picking what materials you want to use and finding the hot end that will work for them. Most of the printers that you will see have a single extruder, which means you can only put out one material at a time. But some do have dual extruders, so you can have two different types of materials within the same print. This allows you to put multiple colors into a single print or use one for the model and one for dissolvable supports. These can be difficult to calibrate together and are usually only available on more expensive machines. The surface that you print on is also really important. A lot of printers have glass build plates and this works for a lot of plastics, but sometimes you need extra help to get the print to adhere to the surface. A lot of plates have special coatings on them that help with adhesion. There are metal plates that are magnetic so that you can pull them off and pop the print off the surface. But there are aftermarket products for just about every printer to upgrade the build plate. The user interface for printers is also really important and varied across the spectrum. Most of them will have a dial and a single button, but the really expensive ones will have a touch screen with a really nice experience. Those are kind of important and useful, but most of the work that you do preparing a print actually happens in the slicing software on a computer. Just about every printer has an SD slot so that you can transfer your models through an SD card, but a lot of them also have Wi-Fi or Ethernet. There's also some bonus features that you may want to keep an eye out for that just make printers really nice to use. You've got auto bed leveling or mesh bed leveling. Those both do a lot of the work for you to compensate for an unlevel bed. You've got power recovery in case you lose power in the middle of a print. You've got run out sensors that detect when you run out of filament. There's a lot of things that can make printing much easier to do. I hope that information helps you make an educated purchase as you're looking to get your first 3D printer. If you've got some other tips of things that people should keep their eyes out for, leave them down in the comments so we can all learn together. I've got a playlist of other bits videos that you may be interested in, and I'll be back later this week with a new project video. I'll see you then.